Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Scarfy Television. I'm Paul Jones. Yesterday, amongst peaceful student protest, the University Council adopted the Student Code of Conduct. After more than a year of discussion, the code was released to students on the 30th of August, giving them just 12 days to object to the code. This half-hearted attempt at consultation and failure to follow due process resulted in yesterday's protest. Tonight, Scarfy Television subjects the code to severe scrutiny. Enjoy the show. Yesterday, the University Council adopted an unlawful document rejecting recommendations made by OUSA and lawyers. In adopting the code, the University has extended their powers beyond what the Education Act allows, thus acting ultra vires. The University have uh, decided to ratify a, an unlawful document. Uh, we extended the Olive Branch by saying, look, uh, we've made some amendments that would actually make this unlawful document a lawful one. Uh, but they chose to ignore that advice and, um, well, you know, we're going to have to see how, what, what happens because of that. Aside from its illegal status, OUSA is opposed to the code because of the university's failure to follow due process and their lack of consultation with students. Well, I mean, it's the kind of thing that we need to work together as a community. So it's something that OUSA, the university, the DCC, a whole lot of stakeholders need to get together on. And that's part of the thing that really frustrates me the most about this, is that the university hasn't talked to the student body about this. They haven't consulted with students. And so how are they going to find what's effective when they're not even asking us what we think? It's ridiculous. President-elect Renee Heal explained that upon recommendations being made to the code, the correct procedure the university ought to follow is to send the new code back to the Senate for consideration. However, the university ignored this process by taking the code straight to the council where it had a greater likelihood of being tabled. I want the University Council to know that we expect to be consulted, to know that students care about these issues and to know that it's completely, completely inappropriate for them to try and pass regulations without telling us about them first. Today's meeting for the proposed Code of Conduct is currently taking place just over here in the uh, University Council building. Right now we've got plenty and plenty of students out here, good to see so much support, both for and against the Code of Conduct. Contrary to yesterday's media release indicating student support for the proposed Code of Conduct, the general consensus at yesterday's protest assured that student support for the Code is anything but welcoming. I think it's necessary for on-campus behaviour. The university owns the campus so they have a right to you know, protect their property and everything, but in terms of off-campus behaviour it's got nothing to do with them and I don't think they should have any involvement in it. So. It's not the university's business, it's the police. They should be looking after it and they should, be, uh, they should be responsible for educating us. The release included opinions from Vice-Chancellor Professor David Skegg, stating that feedback the committee had received showed that most students welcomed the code. However, a student poll on the OUSA website clearly shows that student support for the code is relatively dismal, with a whopping 58.9% stating that they definitely do not support the code, compared to a measly 24.2% in favour of the code, and a further 16.9% objecting to the code as it stands at present. I think you know, students are going to be students regardless of the rules and regulations, and they'll just find a way around it. While the general behaviour of students at yesterday's protest was fairly placid, it was clear that those present were not shy about voicing their objection to the code. Skeg equals smeg! The protest featured local bands, Taliband and Glad Eyes, as well as various other forms of entertainment, ranging from light drinking, bouncy castles and the ever-present threat of potential couch fires. Good to see all the students have come together to protest against this and it's pretty mild mannered at the moment but it's good to see everyone come together. Unfortunately yesterday's protest had no direct impact on the code's implementation. However those present can be fully commended for voicing their opinions and representing their rights as students. Sam Mora, Scarfy Television. So with the majority of students opposed to the code of conduct, its enforcement is set to become a major point of contention between university and students. Heal urges the university to consider more creative alternatives in dealing with unruly student behaviour. Um, other things we can look at are things like not selling liquor in glass bottles in North Dunedin, so having cans as an alternative. Things like that, like really practical things, and then people can't go and smash their glass bottles. I think there are many more um, creative solutions to these problems than to implement some university policy that people are basically going to ignore anyway. Other possible alternatives to the Code of Conduct include liquor bans in student areas either at the weekend or for especially volatile occasions such as the recent Undy 500 car rally. However, no matter what measures are set in place, 
AUSA and like-minded students remain concerned about their enforcement. Well, I mean, the code of conduct isn't going to work, so the first thing we need to do is to put in something that will work. Um, the most effective alternative is to actually have policing that applies the law um, effectively. So at the moment we're seeing kind of, you know, people getting away with, um, you know, criminal acts. Um, and there are a whole lot of, if people go out and want to burn couches or break bottles, there are a whole host of laws that they can be, um, you know, got under. So the first thing we need to do is actually have that applied correctly. So despite hope that the code of conduct would put an end to issues of student behaviour in Dunedin, from the looks of yesterday's protest, this may only be the beginning. Thanks for watching tonight's exclusive final edition of Scarfy Television. We hope you found our season enjoyable and informative. We leave you now with a montage of previous Scarfy episodes. And remember, Dunedin, stay Scarfy!